most modern believers think that Yahweh is good and the devil is bad. And the fact is, Satan hasn't bothered authoring a book and telling us his side of the story just yet. Well, probably just not under that name. <laughs> it's because Yahweh is actually bipolar. And the figure Satan is just another side of this misguided creature. Because after all, the Bible says Yahweh is responsible for 250 million deaths, while his alter ego, Satan, is responsible for only 10, and all of those Yahweh commanded of him. Sounds like good side, this guy is actually Satan. If something bad happens, like an earthquake or a tsunami, we tend to call it an act of God, not an act of Satan. You get my point. It beggars my imagination that millions of believers claim that this God is good. When the evidence from his alleged behaviors and teachings are so comprehensively the opposite. Throughout the Bible, there are numerous accounts of Yahweh dishing out divine punishment by the way of genocide, plagues, ethnic cleansing, and the like. If the Bible were the word of the true God, then it would mean God with a big G, supports infanticide, slavery, torture, genocide, and all manners of death, destruction, and suffering. Yeah, it don't seem right, does it? I don't call that Satan has ever been being blamed for such things. And just take the crucifixion as an example, the foundation of the religion. There is nothing less, purportedly, than a human sacrifice to allow sinners to go free punishment after their sins. What father would have his own son, a good man, by all accounts brutally tortured and murdered so that bad people could be let out of their crimes? If the answer is that God loves us all and wants us to be forgiven, why did he not just go do that in the first place? Why insist on bloodthirsty crucifixion first? This God is clearly a tyrant. He has committed many acts of evil and somehow managed to amass an incredible following. And that means that Yahweh must have been the ultimate deceiver. He has painted this Satan as the deceiver to disguise his own faults and gain worshippers in a classic manner. If the tyrannical dictator can condemn some other guy and convince enough people, he can get away with much evil. This is a ploy that is commonly used by skillful politicians and anyone who seeks personal gain at the expense of others. <laughs> the only time that Satan is accused of doing some real wrong is when he supposedly encouraged the naive Eve to eat from the tree of knowledge. And is that a bad thing? Is knowledge a bad thing? Is knowing the difference between good and evil? Yeah, I get it. I know. Surely not. But we have to blame Satan for something. Knowledge has enabled mankind to cure infectious diseases, perform life-saving surgeries, feed the hungry, rescue victims of natural disasters, helicopters, lifeboats, and the like. Yahweh, who would deny us this knowledge, has, according to believers, punished the whole of mankind in perpetuity for this original sin, as well as punishing all species of snakes forevermore by removing their legs. Yahweh is no more than a terrorist, and that is why his followers are said to be God-fearing. His followers must surely be evil at heart, because they believe that we all, including themselves, would be incapable of being good, moral people, unless we learn to fear this tyrant and to do his bidding. What is it in the human psyche that facilitates such a mass delusion of objectivity? Maybe the desire for a happy afterlife is so overwhelming that we, well, religious believers at any rate, turn a blind eye to Yahweh's overwhelming propensity for evil. It's clear that all religious people suffer from Stockholm Syndrome. There is a common theme in the Western religions. That is the idea that our earthly existence is one of suffering, and only in death can we find release from the suffering through salvation. So we're stuck in this world where we're doomed to suffer until we are given a sweet release of death. Seems like a captive situation to me. 
The underlying premise of Stockholm Syndrome is the captor convinces the captives that he is capable of ending their life and is willing to do so. The captives believe it's safer to align with their captor and endure their captivity rather than resist and face death. The captive's motivation to live outweighs their impulse to hate the person who creates their dilemma. Now someone who has had nothing but misery in their life would probably find it hard to believe in a loving God, just as someone who is held captive by a captor who is constantly tormenting them will grow to hate their captor. But just as captives focus on the brief showings of benevolence by their captor, so Christianity teaches its followers to be thankful for the blessings their Lord has given them, rather than be resentful to him for the things that he has denied them or taken away.